السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Welcome to another stop on our journey with the Quran. And today, inshallah, we're going to be talking about two of the, of the beautiful surah of the Quran, Surah Maryam and Surah Taha. Surah Maryam is a surah Makkiyah revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Mecca. And it's named after a Sayyidah Maryam alayhi salam, the mother of Sayyidina Isa alayhi nabina wa alayhi salatu wa salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named a Sayyidah Maryam alayhi salam as the best woman ever created. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Ali Imran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen her over all the women of mankind to receive that gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that would be her son Sayyidina Isa ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wa salam. Uh, in uh, a certain narration that's attributed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I'm not sure about its authenticity but the meaning is valid and that meaning is that uh, there were many perfect men however there were only four perfect women and these four perfect women, perfect women were Asiya, the wife of Fir'aun the one who told Fir'aun to take Sayyidina Musa and to raise him as a son and she was a believer who asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to spare her and to save her from Fir'aun and his bad deeds and to get her into his paradise subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls her a perfect woman according to that narration. The other one is a Sayyida Maryam alayhi salam, the mother of Sayyidina Isa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called her a perfect woman, not only a perfect woman, woman but the best woman ever created and then the remaining two are from within the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and these were as Sayyidah Khadija bint Khuwailid Radiallahu Anha the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the beloved wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the last one is as Sayyidah Fatima Zahra Radiallahu Anha the daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so these are four perfect women if we look at their lives if we look at their struggle and their sacrifice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us lessons through their lives and today we're going to talk about the lessons learned from the life of Sayyidah Maryam alayhi salam we talked before about this blessed family the family of Imran Imran is the father of Sayyidah Maryam alayhi salam although he is never mentioned in the, the Quran in any event her mother is mentioned but her father is never mentioned the family of Imran is that blessed family that included a Sayyidina Maryam alayhi salam Sayyidina Isa ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wa salam Sayyidina Zakariya ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wa salam and Sayyidina Yahya ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wa salam and the mother of Sayyidina Yahya the wife of Sayyidina Zakariya this is a blessed family therefore the surah here starts although it's named surah Maryam it starts with the remembrance of Sayyidina Zakariya the surah starts with these individual letters and this time this is the only surah that starts with these five individual letters there are many surah in the Quran that start with ha mim many surah that start with alif lam mim Many surahs that start with Alif, Lam, Ra. However, this is the only surah that starts with these five letters. Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ayn, Sad. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, Dikru rahmati rabbika abdahu zakariya. The remembrance of uh, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over his servant Zakariya. Ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wa salam. Id nada rabbahu nida'an khafiya. He called Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in secrecy. He was suffering in silence. Sayyidina Zakariya ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wa salam comes from the offspring of Sayyidina Ibrahim, from the line of Sayyidina Ishaq and Sayyidina Ya'qub ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wa salam. And he was entrusted with the care for the temple. So he was the caretaker of the temple. Sayyidina Zakariya ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wa when he grew old, he worried, who's going to take care of the temple after me? I don't have a son. Normally, it would be my descendant, my son, who would take that responsibility. 
However, I do not have a son. And I'm worried who is going to establish the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the temple. So he's supplicating in a very tender way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَهَنَ الْعَظْمُ مِنِّي وَاشْتَعَلَ الرَّأْسُ شَيْبَ وَلَمْ أَكُمْ بِدُعَائِكَ رَبِّ شَقِيَّ Oh Allah, my bones have become weak, which means I have become weak. It's a very eloquent way of speech. My bones have become weak. And my head, my hair has turned completely white. اشْتَعَلَ الرَّأْسُ شَيْبًا Out of old age. وَلَمْ أَكُمْ بِدُعَائِكَ رَبِّ شَقِيَّ he knows that according to the normal reasons, according to logic, according to what people call nature and biology, it's impossible for him to beget a son at this age. It's impossible for him to become a father. If that were to happen, it would have happened in his youth when he was strong and when his wife was still in the age of fertility and childbearing. But his wife grew old he has grown old. However, he still has hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created the reasons and the means. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can create against these reasons and against these means. He is the one who created them and he is the one who can override them if he wills subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِنِّي خِفْتُ الْمَوَالِيَ مِنْ وَرَائِي وَكَانَتِ امْرَأَةِ عَاقِرَةِ فَهَبْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيَّ When he says, وَلَمْ أَكُمْ بِدُعَائِكَ رَبِّ شَقِيَّ I have never suffered uh, negatively or I've never failed to receive what I asked for, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've always been happy with asking you and supplicating to you and today I still have hope that through a miracle, I'm not sure how, I don't know how, but I hope to have a son. I am complaining or I'm describing my conditions to you, O oh Allah, and you know them better than I do. My wife is old. She's never been able to uh, get a son to get pregnant. She has been barren all of her life. And I'm worried about who is going to take, about the people after me. They might neglect this temple. فَهَبْلِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيَّ O Allah, I want... I'm asking you, I'm begging, I'm begging you to grant me from your treasures, Waliya, this son who's going to inherit from me and inherit from the family of Yaqub, that blessed family, these descendants of the prophets, وَجْعَلْهُ رَبِّ And O oh Allah, make him uh, pleased with you and may, may be you pleased with him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to that supplication, to that hidden supplication in the darkness of the night, in the seclusion of remote uh, corner of the temple. No one else heard the supplication but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to this supplication. Ya Zakariya, inna nubashiruka bi ghulamin ismuhu Yahya, lam naj'al lahu min qablu samiyya. O Zakariya, we have granted your wish, we have responded to your supplication, you are going to be the proud father of a son whose name is going to be Yahya, which means the one who lives. And no one else has been ever named with that name before him. He is going to be the first person to be named Yahya. Sayyidina Zakariya ala Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam is a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His heart is full, of, is full of faith and hope. And he's the one who initiated that request to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs him that your request has been granted, he wondered. He doesn't want to believe his ears. He doubts, was this really the response to my supplication or is it the shaitan playing tricks with me? So he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, how come? How can I have a child at this old age when I'm so old and my wife is so old? How can it happen? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, قَالَ كَذَلِكَ قَالَ رَبُّكَ Thus spoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks, there's no uh, objection or no resistance to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالَ كَذَلِكَ قَالَ رَبُّكَ هُوَ عَلَيَّ هَيٌّ عَلَيَّ هَيٌّ This is nothing. I can do that 
any time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, this is so easy for me. وَقَدْ خَلَقْتُكَ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَلَمْ تَكُوْ شَيْئًا And I created you from before and you are nothing. So why are you surprised that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can grant you that son that you have long asked for? Sayyidina Zakaria still wants some confirmation. So he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, قَالَ رَبِّ جَعَلْ لِي آيَةً Oh Allah, give me a physical sign so that I know that I'm not dreaming, I'm not imagining things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, قَالَ آيَتُكَ أَلَّا تُكَلِّمَ النَّاسَ ثَلَاثَ لَيَالٍ سَوِيَّةً For three consecutive nights, you will not be able to speak. Only you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make tasbih to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make hamd to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the only thing that you're going to be able to say is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other than that, you're not going to be able to speak any regular speech to, to the people around you, to the people in the temple. You won't be able to do that. After third, three days, your speech is going to be restored. So again, in addition to your glorification and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can tell the other people about this great gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to send your way. So when he got out of the temple, he told the people around him, Glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night for this blessing that he subhanahu wa ta'ala not only has bestowed upon me but upon all of you because now there's going to be a pious caretaker of the temple establishing the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now commands Sayyidina Yahya ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wa salam Ya Yahya, khudi al-kitaba bi quwwa wa ataynahu al-hukma sabiyya. O oh, Yahya, take this responsibility seriously. Take it with strength. Don't be weak in establishing the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him wisdom from a very young age. So this is the, the beginning of the miracle uh, on this family, this blessed family, a family of Imran in the form of Sayyidina Yahya being granted to Sayyidina Zakaria ala nabina alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes him as a good son a pious son, a son who would take care of his parents So the birr of the, the parents, as we mentioned before, comes immediately after the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala salutes Sayyidina Yahya by saying وَسَلَامٌ عَلَيْهِ يَوْمَ وُلِدَ وَيَوْمَ يَمُوتُ وَيَوْمَ يُبْعَثُ حَيَّةٌ And be, may peace be upon him the day he was born, the day he dies, and the day he's going to be resurrected. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us to another member of this blessed family, a Sayyidah Maryam alayhi salam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, when she was worshipping again in seclusion in the far corner of the temple, away from everyone else, dedicated her life to, to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then suddenly, in that secluded place that was only uh, prepared for her, she finds a human or what appears to be a human in front of her. So immediately she seeks refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالَتْ إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِالرَّحْمَانِ مِنْكَ إِنْ كُنْتَ تَقِيَّ Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not approach. This is a place for me to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm asking you to leave and I'm asking you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Since you came to the temple, you've got to be a believer. I'm asking you by the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to stay away from, him, from me. And he tells her, I am actually coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me as a messenger to give you the good news and the glad tidings that you will bear a child. Now as Sayyidah Maryam, the virgin, who has never been approached by or touched by men before, she wonders. Again, she's thinking in the normal way of creation that a son comes from two parents, a father and a mother, a male and a female. So she wonders, how come you're telling me that I'm going to be bearing a child when I've never been touched by a man? And again, he tells her, this is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created the means and the reasons. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selects, subhanahu wa ta'ala wills to defy these means and reasons by granting you that child which is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who's not going to be coming through the normal way of two parents having a child. 
Now she's so worried because what's going to happen to my reputation when people see me pregnant, when they see me carrying a child, what are they going to say about me? What are they going to say about my parents, about my upbringing? So she's worried about that and she has to because again, her reputation is her only uh, treasure that she has. She has been known as this pious, dedicated young woman. So now if she comes with a child, she's going to be accused in her honor. So she's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how come is that going to happen? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ That things happen just by the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. كُنْ be and it becomes. Now she became pregnant, heavily pregnant, about to, maybe again for that time she was wearing uh, clothes that can hide this pregnancy so people did not feel that pregnancy and she concealed it for that period but now she has come become full term she's about to give birth she is stepping out of the temple trying to go again to a secluded place away from the eyes of everyone she's weak she's tired she's exhausted as it's expected of a woman in her ninth month of pregnancy in labor so she says i wish i was never born i wish i had died long before that what kind of scandal is gonna happen what kind of accusation am i gonna face am, am i gonna face she's tired she's hungry she's thirsty so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comforts her she is resting next to the trunk of a tree by a river that's running allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells her just shake the trunk of that tree push it and the tree is going to drop close to you dates that are ripe that are easy to to eat and they're going to be nutritious and supporting you in that time of labor and then that river next to you you can drink from it eat and drink and calm down since it's the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for you a response for all of these accusations do not worry about your reputation do not worry about the response of your people when you come with a child on your hand now here's a very beautiful hint uh, through this ayah imagine and i challenge anyone by the way i challenge the strongest of us to go to a tree to, to go to a palm tree and stand by the bottom of that, uh, the, that palm tree and try to shake the trunk. You can try for as long as you can. Nothing's gonna happen. If that palm tree is full of dates and you can see the dates, when you try to push that palm tree, nothing's gonna happen. It's not gonna yield, it's not gonna shake, it's not gonna move. So what, imagine now, if that happens to the strongest person who cannot shake that trunk of the tree, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Sayyidah Maryam, the woman in labor, in weakness, in pain, to shake the palm of the tree. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again is promising her it's going to drop these dates, this, these ripe, delicious dates on you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have provided a Sayyidah Maryam as he has provided for her before when she was in the temple when fruits and vegetables out of season would come to her and Sayyidina Zakaria would ask Anna laki hada ya Maryam. where did you get this from? how did this get in here? and she said Huwa min indillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have supported her in the same way however Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us even in moments of weakness even in the moments when you are tired Try to do the maximum of your effort. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah subhanahu wa taala holds us accountable for the maximum of our effort. وسعها not just any effort but the maximum of the effort, and that's exactly what Sayyidah Maryam عليه السلام is doing here. She follows the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa taala. The dates come. She drinks from that water. And now she comes back to her village, to her people, carrying a child that is crying. They look at her and tell her, what happened to you, Maryam? Where did you get this child from? Who is the father of that child? You claim to be this 
chaste, clean, pure woman. What have you done behind our backs? And they start pointing fingers to her. So instruct, instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she points to that baby. She points to the baby and they ask her, what do you expect to happen? Is, it, is he going to talk to us? Is he going to respond to us? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accomplish that miracle makes Sayyidina Isa ala nabina alayhi salatu wasalam speak as a baby and say, Inni Abdullah, I am the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Atani al kitaba wa ja'alani nabiyya. He gave me the book and he made me a prophet. He's telling them about something that's going to happen years later when he grows up. But he's telling, he's giving them a fast forward, a glimpse of the future. He's telling them, this is the declaration of the innocence of my mother. I am the gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this miraculous way to my mother. She is innocent as she has always been. And I am a proof that I am the miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَجَعْلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made me blessed wherever I am. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded me وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ مَا دُمْتُ حَيَّ وَبَرَّمْ بِوَالِدَتِي And again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who made me a prophet, a messenger, gave me the book, commanded me to establish the prayer and to pay my zakat, to pay the charity, the alms. He also subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded me to be kind to my mother. In the story of Sayyidina Yahya, وَبَرَّمْ بِوَالِدَيْهِ Because he had two parents. In the story of Sayyidina Isa عَلَى نَبِينَ وَعَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ وَبَرَّمْ بِوَالِدَتِي Because he only has one parent, as Sayyidina Maryam عَلَيْهَ السَّلَامُ And then, وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيَّ يَوْمَ وُلِدْتُ وَيَوْمَ أَمُوتُ وَيَوْمَ أُبْعَثُ حَيَّ And may the peace in the story of Sayyidina Yahya ala Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam wa salamun alayhi may peace be upon him but in the story of Sayyidina Isa was salamu alayhi and the peace may be upon me the day I'm born, I was born the day I die and the day I am resurrected now we know that Sayyidina Isa ala Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam was uh, raised to the heavens alive and he is still alive he will come back to earth by the end of time and rule on earth according to the sharia of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam so he will come back as a muslim as a follower of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam rule with islam live for as long Allah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala authorizes him to live and then he will die on earth and will be buried on earth and then on the day of judgment he will be resurrected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is a glimpse, or this is a brief story about Isa ibn Maryam. قَوْلَ الْحَقِّ الَّذِي فِيهِ يمترون, The truth that they are denying. مَا كَانَ لِلَّهِ أَنْ يَتَّخِدَ, أن يتخذ مِنْ وَلَدٍ سُبْحَانَ إِذَا قَضَى أَمْرًا فَإِنَّمَا يَقُولُ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never take a son. سبحانه, may, be he, may he be glorified from that. His will, subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he wills something to happen, is just enough for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, kun fayakun, be, and it would be. And Sayyidina Isa reminds them that I am not the God, I am not the son of God, I'm a servant of God, Abdullah, inna Allah rabbi wa rabbukum fa'budu, hada siratu mustaqim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my Lord, and is your Lord, worship him, this is leading to the straight path. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the people after Sayyidina Isa, how they differed and how they changed, how they switched, how they veered from that path by claiming his divinity or that he is part divine, he is the son of God or he is the God, the incarnation of God. Ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yasifun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again is telling Sayyidina Isa and telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَأَنْذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَةِ إِذْ قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةِ وَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Warn them about the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it a different name here. Not يوم الدين, not يوم القيامة, not يوم الحساب, but يوم الحسرة, the day of regret, the day of remorse, when the non-believers are going to feel regret and remorse 
or those who changed the nature of Sayyidina Isa ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wasalam and claimed things that he did not claim himself, these are going to feel regret and remorse on that day of judgment, the day that many people are uh, distracted from its remembrance or uh, preparing for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes this part of the story by saying, Inna nahnu naritul arda wa man alayha wa ilayna yurja'oon. Everything on this earth and the earth itself are going to be restored back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inherited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that we are returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then comes another chapter of the story of Sayyidina Ibrahim and the dialogue that took place between Sayyidina Ibrahim and his father uh, and how Sayyidina Ibrahim did not worship these idols and he stayed away from them and he advised his father and his people to abandon the worship of the idols and they challenged him, they tried to kill him, to burn him alive and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him. So he told them, I'm, gone, I'm not going to intermingle with you, I'm going to stay away from you. I'm gonna stay away from you and I'm not gonna be part of your wrongdoing. I'm going to only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I I'm not gonna be and I'm gonna supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I would not suffer through my worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about other prophets. Sayyidina Musa ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wasalam and his brother Sayyidina Harun. Sayyidina Ismail ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wasalam. How the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described Sayyidina Ismail is very beautiful. Kana ya'muru ahlahu bil salah. He used to command his family to establish the prayer. Was zakah and to pay the alms. So not only was he responsible for himself, but he was responsible for his people and especially his family. He used to remind them all the time of the prayer and the charity. And in the consideration of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will be satisfied and he will be pleased. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about Sayyidina Idris and other prophets and messengers and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about what happened to the people after these prophets and messengers. The people who came after them did not live up to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the advice of these prophets and their reminder. So they wasted their prayer. They were not careful about performing their prayer on time or did not perform the prayer at all. They followed, the, followed their desires. They will, they will face a severe punishment for what they have done. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the exclusion for those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do good deeds. Those are going to be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his paradise. Jannati adnin allati wa'ada ar-Rahman wa'ibadahu bil-ghayb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised his servants these, this paradise so he subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will fulfill that promise and that promise is going to be uh, deserved only by those who are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the heirs of that paradise the dwellers of this paradise are the ones who are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the meaning of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لا يجمع الله على عبد أمنين ولا خوفين. The mere translation of the meaning of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not combine two fears and two uh, feelings of safety and relaxation and security. So whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this earthly life, is going to be safe and secure and comfortable on the Day of Judgment and vice versa. Whoever feels safe and secure and immune from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life is going to taste that severe punishment on the Day of Judgment. The ayat are so beautiful, if we try to stop at every ayah, it's going to take uh, 
a long time. Um, at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was talking about paradise and about the Day of Judgment and about the companions and about the believers who are going to be spared from any torture in the hellfire. His wife, Sayyidah Hafsa, radiallahu anha, had an understanding. So she told the Prophet Sallallahu how come, O Rasulullah Sallallahu doesn't Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala say, وَإِن مِّنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا كَانَ عَلَى رَبِّكَ حَتْمًا مَقْضِيًّا She understood that every individual will have to go through the hellfire, even if briefly, before going to paradise. But Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam corrected her, corrected her, misunderstanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he told her don't you hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the following ayah saying ثُمَّ نُنَجِّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ وَنَذَرُ الظَّالِمِينَ فِيهَا جِثِيَّةٍ that the ones who are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the ones who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are going to be completely spared from this hellfire they're not going to even enter that hellfire but the ones the oppressors the ones who are not mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are going to stay there sitting in misery and in punishment and in torture. So again, when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take us to paradise, Allahumma adkhilna al-jannata bi ghayri sabiqati adabin wa la munaqashati hisab. Oh Allah, grant us paradise without passing through or going through the hellfire and without any detailed discussion about our, our books and our accountability because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses the details of the book, the person will be found guilty and they will be held accountable and will, will, are going to be punished. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes that questioning easy and short and simple, He subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant that person forgiveness even for the minor sins that he or she has committed because all of us commit sins day and night. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so forgiving he subhanahu wa ta'ala has concealed many of these sins during our lives and he subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them on the day of judgment and to grant us paradise without any punishment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about the story of that arrogant servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira that tyrant at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who claimed that he defies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not resurrect anyone, that it's just this life and once we die, we die, that's it. And he said, uh, even if there's a life after death, I have wealth, I have strength, I have a big family here in this life, so your Lord definitely is going to honor me also on if there's an eternal life, he's going to grant me children and he's going to grant me wealth as well. أَفَرَأَيْتَ الَّذِي كَفَرَ بِآيَاتِنَا وَقَالَ لَأُوتَيَنَّ مَالًا وَوَلَدًا أَطَّلَعَ الْغَيْبِ أَمِ اتَّخَدَ عِنْدَ الرَّحْمَانِ عَهْدًا Have you seen that man, that arrogant, tyrant, ignorant, who claims that there is no life after death, or if there is life after death, he is going to be as prosperous as he is in this life, and he will have money and children? Has he looked at the unknown? Has he looked at the events of the Day of Judgment? Or does he have a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Kalla. No, indeed, no. سنكتب ما يقول ونمد له من العذاب مدى ونرثه ما يقول ويأتينا فردا We are going to write what he said and we're going to extend his life so that he does even more sins to deserve more punishment on the day of judgment and then he is going to be deserving of what he has sent forward and he will come to us to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just like anyone else individually. There's going to be that individual stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to account for one's deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the end of the surah uh, denies these false allegations of those who claimed of Sayyidina Isa to be the son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدَ you have come with something abhorrent, unacceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you claim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a son. This is a very heavy word to make that claim against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. تَكَادُ السَّمَاوَاتُ يَتَفَطَّرْنَ مِنْهُ وَتَنْشَقُّ الْأَرْضُ وَتَخِرُّ الْجِبَالُ هَدَّ أَنْ دَعَوْ لِلْرَّحْمَانِ وَلَدَ That 
the skies are about to collapse from the weight of that false word and the earth would crack and the mountains would collapse from this falsehood. وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لِلرَّحْمَنِ أَنْ يَتَّخِذَ وَلَدَ الرَّحْمَنْ The glory is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He should not have a son. إِنْ كُلُّ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِلَّا آتِ الرَّحْمَنِ عَبْدًا Everything, everyone in the heavens and in the on earth, whether it's angels, humans, jinn, beasts, animals, birds, whatever, everything, mountains, trees, skies, everything is coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a slave. لَقَدْ أَحْصَاهُمْ وَعَدَّهُمْ عَدَّى He subhanahu wa ta'ala has accounted for them and counted them one by one. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the number of his slaves. وَكُلُّهُمْ آتِيهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَرْدًا And each one of them will come and stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala individually to account for what they have done. Surah Taha, another very beautiful surah, uh, also is a surah Makkiyya, and it starts with these two letters, Taha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ لِتَشْقَى إِلَّا تَذْكِرَةً لِمَنْ يَخْشَى We did not reveal that Qur'an to you so that you might be miserable. This is just a reminder for those who are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for those who fear that meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know that they're going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so they prepare for that meeting in the right way. تَنزِيلًا مِمَّنْ خَلَقَ الْأَرْضَ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ الْعُلَى الرَّحْمَانِ الرَّحْمَانُ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ اسْتَوَى This is a revelation from the one who created the earth and the elevated skies and that is Ar-Rahman subhanahu wa ta'ala who settled in the way that, is, that fits his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala on the throne. لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا وَمَا تَحْتَ الثَّرَى To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belong everything in the heavens, in the earth and everything in between and everything is that's underneath that dust which is the soil of that earth. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gives us another uh, chapter of the story of Sayyidina Musa ala nabina alayhi salatu wasalam. And this chapter of the story comes after Sayyidina Musa has grown uh, uh, as a strong man, has made his mistake of killing the uh, Egyptian in Egypt, fled Egypt, lived in Madian for 10 years, in the service and the support of Sayyidina Shu'ayb ala nabiyyina alayhi salatu wasalam, marrying one of his daughters. And now Sayyidina Musa has been called by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go back to Egypt to extract his people from bondage and to remind Fir'aun about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and advise him and correct his wrong perception of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the moment, this is the place going back from Madian in Palestine on foot to Egypt. That trip that Sayyidina Musa took 10 years earlier, escaping from Egypt in fear, looking behind him for fear to be captured and killed by Fir'aun. Now he's coming back as the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling Sayyidina Musa. It was a dark, cold night. Sayyidina Musa ala nabina alayhi salatu wasalam with his family, with his wife at least, sees some fire in the distance. So he tells his wife, stay here. I'm going to go to that fire to see if there's someone there who can give us some hospitality or food or shelter. Or if I don't, then at least I can bring some uh, uh, branches uh, lit on fire to again get some warmth in this cold night. And when he reaches that fire, he hears a voice coming from that fire. Oh Musa, take your shoes off, take your sandals off. I am your Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, talking, talking to you from this uh, fire. I have chosen you. So listen to what I'm going to reveal to you. Innani ana Allahu la ilaha illa ana fa'budni wa aqim salata li dhikri. I am your Lord. There's no Lord but me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship me and establish prayer in my remembrance. 
إن الساعة آتية أكاد أخفيها لتجزى كل نفس بما تسعى The day of judgment is coming I'm almost hiding it from everyone uh, and for, so that every soul on that day will be compensated for what it has earned فلا يصدنك عنها من لا يؤمن بها واتبعها وله فتردى Don't be deceived by those who do not believe in that day of judgment and do not follow their path or otherwise you're gonna go to your destruction. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to comfort Sayyidina Musa. Sayyidina Musa, of course, seeing that scene, hearing that voice coming out of the fire in the darkness of the night, his heart is shaking and trembling. This is something he does not comprehend. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to bring comfort and calm to the heart of Sayyidina Musa ala nabina alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking him, what is that in your right hand, O Musa? And Sayyidina Musa responds that this is my cane, my stick, my staff that has multiple purposes. I, it helps me when I'm walking. I used to bring my cattle, my sheep. Uh, my, I used to gather them with that cane and I have other multiple purposes using that cane. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, this is your only worldly belonging. This is your only uh, possession in this life. Throw it away. As if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Sayyidina Musa, throw this earthly belonging from your consideration, from your life, because now you're going to have a great responsibility. Throw it away, Musa. This cane that is a multi-purpose cane like a Swiss army knife with so many different uses. Now, I'm going to show you. This cane was transformed physically into a snake that was uh, moving around. Sayyidina Musa, of course, and, and this is the natural response whenever we see a snake most reasonable people would feel scared, would feel surprised, especially if it's something they are taken by surprise. So Sayyidina Musa got so scared and he started uh, running away and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, come back, don't be afraid. Whoever has been given peace by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should never feel afraid. Take it back. We're going to return it back to its old nature as a stick. قَالَ خُدْهَا وَلَا تَخَفْ سَنُعِيدُهَا سِيرَتَهَا الْأُولَى Sayyidina Musa, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes him when he saw him in the event of Al-Isra wa Al-Mi'raj, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes him as a man with a very dark skin. So, uh, African skin, basically. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Sayyidina Musa, put your hand in your pocket and take it out and you're going to find it shiny, full of light, with a white color, without any disease. وَضْمُمْ يَدَكَ إِلَىٰ جَنَاحِكَ تَخْرُجْ بَيْضَاءَ مِنْ غَيْرِ سُوءٍ Without any disease. آيَةً أُخْرَى This is another sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so far, you've had three signs. The first one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to you from the fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala transforming that your cane into a snake and restoring it back to a snake, to a cane. And then your hand changing color without any disease, without anything bad. Now, you are going to be commissioned to be sent to that tyrant, Fir'aun. اذهب إلى فرعون إنه طغى. Go to Fir'aun. He spread corruption. He's a big tyrant. Sayyidina Musa ala nabina alayhi wa alayhi salatu wa salam has lived in Madian for 10 years. His tongue is not as fluent as it used to be in the Egyptian language because he has been speaking in the language of Madian for so many years. So now, sometimes he would have to recall some vocabulary from the old Egyptian language. How can he be eloquent in inviting Fir'aun to Islam without speaking the proper language? So Sayyidina Musa والسلام, asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala several requests. قَالَ رَبِّ اشْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحْلُلْ عُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي وَاجْعَلْ لِي وَزِيرًا مِنْ أَهْلِي هَارُونَ أَخِي أُشْدُدْ بِهِ أَزْرِي وَأَشْرِكُ فِي أَمْرِي كَيْ نُسَبِّحَكَ كَثِيرًا وَنَذْكُرَكَ كَثِيرًا إِنَّكَ كُنْتَ بِنَا بَصِيرًا قَالَ قَدْ أُوْتِيتَ سُؤْلَكَ يَا مُوسَى Sayyidina Musa makes several requests 
uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, expand my chest so that I would not be impatient. I know Fir'aun, he's a tyrant, he needs a lot of patience. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give me that patience. Qala Rabbi shrah li sadri. Wayassir li amri. Make my mission easy. Uh, make the obstacles in my path disappear or make them surmountable. And make my tongue loose and fluid with their language so that they can understand what I'm trying to tell them. And oh Allah, I want an earthly support. My brother that I left in Egypt long time ago, this good brother that I had, Harun, make him my companion and my advisor, my wazir from my close family. Support me with him. Make me consult him and making our decision together. The reason is so that instead of me by myself glorifying you and remembering you so that we can do that together. That we can remember you often and a lot. إِنَّكَ كُنْتَ بِنَا بَصِيرًا Oh Allah, you have seen what we have gone through from the killing of the males one year and let them, letting them live the following year. That's why Sayyidina Harun was alive, whereas Sayyidina Musa was about to be killed. And my exile in Madian and the years of living in a foreign land with a foreign language. And now I come back with this huge responsibility. Oh Allah, give me the support. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Sayyidina Musa, قَالَ قَدْ أُوْتِيْتَ سُؤْلَكَ يَا مُوسَى Which is granted. Your supplication has been accepted. And remember how we blessed you before. وَلَقَدْ مَنَنَّا عَلَيْكَ مَرَّةً أُخْرَى Remember when we inspired your mother, when she gave birth to you and you were about to be killed or slaughtered by Fir'aun, as was his practice. And then we inspired her to put you in the basket in the river and that river carried you to the house of Fir'aun and you grew up, grew up in that house of Fir'aun as his son and then uh, we restored you back to your mother when uh, no wet nurse could feed you and your sister told, him, told them about your mother so we restored you back to the uh, arms and the bosom of your mother so that you would grow up uh, in her presence she would enjoy you and you would enjoy her and still Fir'aun is paying for uh, feeding you. So as a, a, a person once said about the, the mother of Sayyidina Musa ala Nabina alayhi salatu salam, تستر القدرة وتأخذ الأجرة She is hiding that uh, sign and that miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not telling them that she's the mother of Sayyidina Musa and she is being being paid for something that she would have done anyway which is nursing her own son this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds him about these years of uh, being in exile in, in Madian and now you came on time the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established Go, you and your brother, to Fir'aun and speak to him softly, kindly. Don't be harsh in your confrontation for, with Fir'aun. He's arrogant, he's a tyrant, he's an oppressor. But, however, speak, choose your words. Use the best words that you can. Maybe he will remember, maybe he would fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, knew that Fir'aun is not going to respond positively to the invitation of Sayyidina Musa. Yet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Sayyidina Musa to follow all the possible means so that he wouldn't regret it later on and say maybe if I've done this maybe if I've done that and Sayyidina Musa and his brother Sayyidina Harun know about the nature of Fir'aun so they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh Allah protect us from Fir'aun and his his long hand and his aggression inna nakhafu an yafruta alayna aw an yatgha قَالَ رَبَّنَا إِنَّنَا نَخَافُ أَنْ يَفْرُطَ عَلَيْنَا أَوْ أَنْ يَطْغَى And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them, Don't worry, don't be afraid, I am going to be with you every step of the way. قَالَ لَا تَخَافَ إِنَّنِي مَعَكُمَا أَسْمَعُ وَأَرَى I hear and I see everything. You are under my custody, you are under my protection. No one is going to be able to hurt you or to harm you. 
they go to Sayyidina, they go to Fir'aun, and they advise him, they remind him of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using very kind words, and his response was, so what about the previous nations? And they tell him that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about them. We mentioned before, Fir'aun asked Sayyidina Musa a very simple question about, who is your Lord? I know myself, I am the Lord. Who is your Lord then? قَالَ فَمَنْ رَبُّكُمَا يَا مُوسَى and again, we mentioned the response of Sayyidina Musa was this very beautiful, comprehensive answer. قَالَ رَبُّنَا الَّذِي أَعْطَى كُلَّ شَيْءٍ خَلْقَهُ ثُمَّ هَدَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that who has created every creature according to the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them to live and then guided them to live accordingly. That worm that lives in the depth of the earth is going to be qualified and prepared to live in that darkness, in that dampness, in the absence of this or that. That bird that's going to fly high in the sky is going to be able to fly without suffering from the thin air. That whale that's going to be living at the depth of the ocean is going to be able to resist that very high pressure that can collapse anything that exists there. That every creature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created has been guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how to live its life in the environment according to which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared them for and created them for. And then uh, he, when Fir'aun asks him, Sayyidina Musa about the previous nations, Sayyidina Musa said, عِلْمُهَا عِنْدَ رَبِّي فِي كِتَابِ Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about that history. لَا يَضِلُّ رَبِّي وَلَا يَنْسَى My Lord does not lose accountability and my Lord never forgets anything. And then he reminds Fir'aun, الذي جعل لكم الأرض مهدا وسلك لكم فيها سبلا وأنزل من السماء ماء فأخرجنا به أزواجا من نبات شتى كلوا ورعوا أنعامكم إن في ذلك لآيات لأولنها منها خلقناكم وفيها نعيدكم ومنها نخرجكم تارة أخرى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing signs of his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala things that even Fir'aun with his tyranny cannot claim to be able to do that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth and provided for all the creatures in the heavens and the earth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that from this earth we created you and from this earth you are going to or to this earth you're going to return to be buried and from this earth you will be resurrected one second time after seeing all the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Fir'aun rebels, rejects, and he's trying to respond to the miracles of Sayyidina Musa by summoning all of his magicians and sorcerers and priests and telling them, I want your help today to confront Musa with his uh, uh, call to worship only one God. These magicians and these sorcerers make a condition. Are you going to reward us generously if we support you? And he tells them, of course. You're going to be my allies, you're going to be my, uh, under my protection, and I'm going to uh, reward you generously if you support me in my resistance to Musa. Now, they come from that day, Sayyidina Musa asks uh, Fir'aun, when uh, uh, should that confrontation be? And Fir'aun tells him about the time and the date. He has prepared his uh, magicians, his sorcerers, and all of his arsenal and army. And now Sayyidina Musa is coming only with his brother and with his cane, but with the support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that would be completely enough. So now is the confrontation. The magicians ask Sayyidina Musa, should we start or should you start? If it's a defiance, if it's a challenge, if it's a game of magic, who should start? And Sayyidina Musa tell them, you go ahead and start. And they take their canes and they make an optical illusion. They do not change the canes physically into, and the ropes, they do not make them become snakes, but they cause an optical illusion like hypnotism or something like that. So people's, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another ayah, people would imagine that these are from the optical illusion, they would imagine that these are snakes. And now it's the turn of Sayyidina Musa. He throws his cane. He has seen that before. And he sees it physically turning into a snake. Now the magicians who know that they did a trick 
but now now they can see they are immune from their own tricks they can see that this cane truly was transformed into a living snake which is something they can never imagine doing so as soon as they see that they recognize this is beyond our powers whoever helped you do that has got to be the true lord so they immediately prostrate to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declaring declaring amanna bi rabbi harun wa musa we declare that we are believers in the lord of harun and musa fir'aun now is burning with anger is this our agreement you betrayed our agreement you failed in the test and now you declare that you're going to follow another lord look now at the punishment that i'm going to inflict on you i'm going to cut your limbs i'm going to cut your hands and arms and legs uh, across so i'm going to cut your right arm with your left leg or your left arm with your right leg so you cannot stand you cannot do anything and then i'm going to crucify you in the uh, trunks of the palm trees and you're going to see who has the severe punishment talking about himself and look at the response of these uh, magicians they said قالوا لن نؤثرك على ما جاءنا من البينات والذي فطرنا فاقض ما انت قاض انما تقضي هذه الحياة الدنيا we are not after having seen the proof we are not gonna be afraid of you we're not gonna prefer the reward that you're gonna give us over the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and has been proven through these signs do whatever you want we don't really care all you can do is just kill us and terminate our earthly life but now we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we know there's going to be another eternal life you will be a loser and we will be the winners we have believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that hoping that he will forgive our former transgressions and our use as your aids and your magicians supporting your reign and your tyranny we have hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us these past transgressions and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wallahu khayrun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is much better then what who you are wa abqa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the everlasting innahu man ya'ti rabbahu mujriman fa inna lahu jahannam la yamutu fiha wa la yahya whoever is going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a criminal are going to be awarded with the hellfire where they will not die and that's not a way of living either way they're going to be living but that's not a life a real life there's no quality of life and then whoever is going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a believer who has done the good deeds and that's a confirmation of their belief these are the ones with the high standards the high status in the consideration of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the story continues with the destruction or the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Sayyidina Musa and his followers leave this land this land of oppression abandon this land move to the east and you're going to be followed by Fir'aun but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Sayyidina Musa and his followers from Fir'aun and Fir'aun was drowned as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us now after they crossed this, that river or that sea and they were in safety now Sayyidina Musa is called by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for another meeting so Sayyidina Musa leaves his people in the trust of his uh, beloved brother Sayyidina Harun ala Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam and tells him keep them obedient keep them united keep them worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Sayyidina Musa goes to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for 40 days he does not come he comes back after 40 days to find a horrific scene he finds his people who have been saved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala worshipping a calf a statue that they have made out of their jewelry and they are led by this man as Samiri and he asked Sayyidina Musa asked his brother Sayyidina Harun what happened didn't you follow my command and Sayyidina Harun tells him you told him you told me to keep them united I was worried 
about splitting them into two groups and I was waiting for you when you come back to see what to do with them and Sayyidina Musa forgave his brother that judgment that uh, inter interpretation of the command of Sayyidina Musa and then he asked as Samiri what did you do why did you do that and Samiri told Sayyidina Musa I have seen what they have not seen and I took some dust from the steps of the angel that I have seen and I have made a, that calf out of gold and I threw this dust at it and the wind when it goes through the body of that calf it would make the sound as if it is making the sound of a real calf so people started worshipping it and Sayyidina Musa alayhi ala Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam told him you go away you, ban you are banished from my people you move away from where we are we, we are we're not going to touch you we're not going to even respond to you but go away do not stay with us so you're going to have a uh, that you have a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are not going to miss that appointment and then Sayyidina Musa burned that calf and restored his people to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking us to a scene from the day of judgment a horrific scene and it has sound it has uh, pictures it has live footage from that scene on the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we are telling you about the stories of people who lived before you and we have revealed that remembrance to you that Quran whoever turns their back to that guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are going to carry a heavy burden on the day of judgment they are going to remain eternally in the punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's the worst load that anyone can carry on their back Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the beginning of that day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands Israfil to blow in the horn for everyone to wake up from their death, their death and be ready for their meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is a very uh, beautiful description from and horrific description by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when someone has is in extreme fear the their blood circulation is affected and their face becomes dark and pale out of fear and out of horror it has a bluish tint they don't even dare speak loudly they're just whispering among themselves for how long have we have we been asleep for how long have we lived it was just 10 nights or 10 days the wisest of them would say oh you have just lived for one day that's it the life that you've lived 50 60 70 100 years it was just like one day and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a scene of that earth of the earth the place of gathering on that day it's completely level it's completely flat so everyone can see at the distance there's no obstacle they ask you about what about these mountains Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them explode and they're going to be leveled they're going to become like wool and then they're going to be leveled and you're not going to see any elevated place or any trough or any deep place in this earth is going to be completely level on that day they're going to call they're, they're going to follow the caller the one who summons them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and out of fear out of horror imagine the billions of, and billions of people who are going to be gathered on that day imagine if there's just someone 
even ev everyone said, uh, that's it. It's going to be a huge loud noise out of these billions. However, everyone is going to be completely silent in anticipation and in, here, in fear. وَخَشَعَتِ الْأَصْوَاتُ لِلرَّحْمَانِ فَلَا تَسْمَعُ إِلَّا همزه. You're going to only hear whispers. Everyone is anticipating what's going to happen now. So if someone wants to say something, it's just going to be very low whisper. يومئذ لا تنفع الشفاعة إلا من أذن له الرحمن ورضي له قولا. Only the ones authorized by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Rahman are going to be able to intercede and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept their intercession and that's only the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as it comes in the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that people would come to the different prophets they go to Sayyidina Adam, to Sayyidina Nuh, to Sayyidina Ibrahim to all the prophets and they ask them first ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to start the day of judgment they're going to be waiting for maybe hundreds of years and they're going to ask their prophets ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to start the events of the day of judgment and each one of the prophets would say I'm not for that I can't do that until they come to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Ana laha. I am for that I am for that and he goes and prostrates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorifies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to authorize that day to start then the event would start and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would go again and intercede on behalf of his nation asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive his nation and grant them paradise and this is al shafaatul kubra the great intercession the honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed only upon his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ الْمَلِكُ الْحَقِّ Elevated and high is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The true king Not like these false tyrants who claim to be kings and uh, sultans and so on وَلَا تَعْجَلْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يُقْضَى إِلَيْكَ وَحْيُ وَقُرْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمَ Whenever Sayyidina Jibreel used to recite the Qur'an to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would repeat immediately so that he doesn't forget and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala told him don't do that just listen to the revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala through Sayyidina Jibreel Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will keep that Qur'an in your heart and your mind you're not gonna forget it وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا and ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to increase your knowledge and finally, the last story in the Quran, in, in, in the Surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again tells us about the very beginning, since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken us to the end of that human life and the events of the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking us back to the very beginning. How did these events start when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the angels to prostrate to Sayyidina Adam and uh, they did, except for Iblis who rebelled and the promise that Sayyidina, that, that Iblis asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granting the wish of that devil, that cursed devil and the promise of that cursed devil to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that people on that day when they come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the non-believers when they resurrected, they're going to be resurrected blind. They cannot see. And, and they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why did you resurrect us blind? We were seeing in this life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would tell them, you received our ayat, our proofs, our signs, and you suppressed them and forgot them. And that's how today you will be negle neg neglected. You will, you will not be cared for. وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally after telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about these detailed stories again as usual after telling Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about these stories of the different prophets and messengers in usually the command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fasbir in this case fasbir ala ma yaqulun endure patience on, uh, over the harassments and the false allegations that they are hurtling towards you وسبح بحمد ربك قبل طلوع الشمس وقبل غروبها ومن آناء الليل فسبح وأطراف النهار لعلك ترضى. Don't pay attention to these false allegations and the name calling and these insults. 
remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the morning and in the evening, before sunrise and before sunset, and in different parts of the night, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will please you on the day of judgment. These are very beautiful ayat coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a way of consoling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, supporting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, strengthening the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and giving him an incentive and a provision to stay the course and keep doing what he's doing with the expectation of the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill our hearts with faith, with light, with guidance, with remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to make our tongues always wet with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Ya Rasulallah, kathurat alayya shara'i'u al-Islam. The obligations of Islam are uh, quite a lot for me. Tell me about something that I should never stop doing. Tell me about something that I should stick to and keep doing that all the time, even if I can do everything else. Something that I should always stick to. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, لا يزال لسانك رطبا بذكر الله. Always keep your tongue wet with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa taala. At the times of solitude, at the time of times of waiting, at any idle time or free time that you might have, invest in that time, utilize that time in the best utilization by remembering Allah subhanahu wa taala. سبحان الله الحمد لله لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله لا إله إلا الله أستغفر الله سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم all the different ways that رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم taught us on how to glorify الله سبحانه وتعالى and remember الله سبحانه وتعالى we ask الله سبحانه وتعالى to be to make us among those who remember الله سبحانه وتعالى under every condition and circumstance and who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save this remembrance for us on the day of judgment so that we find it in the scale of our good deeds inshallah we're going to resume our journey with the Quran tomorrow with Surah Al-Anbiya and Surah Al-Hajj so until tomorrow inshallah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh